Hello and welcome to the next episode of the Klingberg Wing Mark II Development. I'm Rob Klingberg, your host. In this video, I'm going to talk about the configuration changes that I've made uh, for the next round of testing on the slotted flap uh, control system idea. Uh, I hope you've had a chance to see the previous video with the first rough cut, and I hope you've had a chance to go over to Patreon to get the test results or maybe uh, buy me a coffee. Um, and that said, it's come time to have a little heart-to-heart -heart with my YouTube viewers. Um, when I started this project, uh, I started making YouTube videos for a variety of reasons, but one of them was to try to bring in some funds, a little bit of money, to help pay for the project. And I saw YouTube uh, as being a good avenue for that because of the advertising that's on YouTube. Uh, and at that time, it was a viable construct for bringing in some money that will help support the project. Unfortunately, over time, that situation has changed. Um, with the current crop of ad blockers that are out there and the uh, evolving rules at YouTube regarding uh, advertising and how the money is split, um, there's for a guy like me, there's no money in the advertising anymore. For all of last year, all of last year, and all the videos that I made, and all the hundreds, thousands of hours they were watched uh, by you folks out there, uh, I got $100, $100 for the entire year out of advertising. Um, and I don't think I picked up any Patreon uh, members last year. So technically, uh, YouTube's a bust. Uh, you can't uh, bring in any funds that way to help make a project like this go. And projects like this are not cheap. Um, so, that said, uh, I'm going to give this... If there was any confusion before, if you want test results, you're going to have to go somewhere that involves throwing a nickel or two in the pot to get those test results. If people before thought that they were going to go over to Patreon and get the test results for free, well, they were mistaken. Uh, I know I got a number of thumbs down on the video that says, hey, here's the test results, go over to Patreon, and people weren't happy about that. And apparently they didn't understand when I said that up front, when I started the video, that they're going to have to cough up a little money to get those test results. Um, so, uh, what's a guy like me to do? Do I just stop making the videos? Well, I'd rather not. I'd, I'd rather disseminate the information to people that can make good use of it. Um, and if maybe it's a little entertainment. Uh, and, uh, you know, you go out to the movies, you'll spend 50 bucks easy. Uh, maybe you don't go to the movies, but, you know, you can get by here on five bucks. Uh, so um, going forward, I'm going to give this one more try here that if you want to get the test results from this round of testing, you'll have to go to Patreon and become a subscriber there, make a pledge, or have to go to buy me a coffee, uh, throw a few bucks in the pot there, and, and you can get some of the test results that way. One way you get a still photo and a little write-up from me, that's at buy me a coffee. Over at Patreon, you get the whole video discussion, uh, give and take with me. Uh, going forward with all my videos, it's essentially going to be that way. Uh, I, I simply can't spend hundreds and hundreds of hours uh, to make $100 in a year. It's it just, it's dumb. Um, so, uh, and if that doesn't work out, then all of my YouTube videos are going to go to members only. And, and that for anybody to have access to any of the stuff that I post, they'll have to be a member. Uh, so, uh, think about your ability to help contribute to the project. Uh, every penny is welcome and well used. Uh, I don't go out partying with that money. All the money goes directly to the project. And right now that's mostly gasoline for my truck so I can get to and from uh, the test sites. So that said, I hope you uh, enjoy this little episode here and uh, give it a thought about helping out uh, and support the project. So thank you very much. And let's spin around here and I'll reset my chair and we'll get into what I'm doing here with this particular configuration. What you'll see here, same flap we had before, same slot through here. I haven't changed the slot much. Uh, on the inside here, I rounded it off a little bit. Uh, it was kind of a square corner before. I'm going to make it a little easier for the uh, air to get out of the plenum chamber around the corner and down 
the control surface. And uh, before we talk about this floppy thing down here, let's talk about this floppy thing up here. Um, I happen to have some molded fiberglass shape, had a slight curve to it that I was using for other experiments, and I uh, dug that out of my scrap pile and thought, oh, this would be pretty handy for closing up this gap. Now, the flaps on my wing are designed just like this. They have a flat face on the front of them, and they're hinged on the lower surface only. And they do the same thing. There's a, a large gap between the rear spar and the flap when it's deployed, which is draggy, uh, not necessarily the best idea. Plus, we want to help smooth out the flow over the control surface, so it'd be good if we help the air get across that gap. So that's what we're doing here uh, with this component. And if you'll see that when this is all the way up, this is... Uh, this cover, the gap cover, runs right up to where uh, the, uh, the gap, the slot is in the control surface. Uh, that's about as far as you can go. If this uh, were a final configuration, might be able to go a little bit further. There's a particular reason for that I'll discuss in a minute. Um, and then as this goes down, uh, and it's difficult to see here, but you know, I'll put my finger on the point. Here's, here's the leading edge of that flap. And you can see I get all the way down to here, uh, which is, looks like it's more than 45 degrees deflection before it goes past the end of this cover. And, and this little bit here, yeah, there'd be a vortex that forms here. We'll get some recirculating flow because there is a gap here. In reality, I would mold one of these that's shaped exactly to do this. So that as this edge came, it would touch there just like that and keep that closed off and that'd be just about best and this would be flexible so that as this comes up it'll just oh, I'm hung up on a piece of tape it'll push that back up like that now that said these are always tricky designs because this will be very susceptible to flutter uh, there'll be particular speeds and if there's separated flow it's going to start to do this it'll start to buzz when I put gap seals on the Elevons, uh, it happened at quite a low speed, 25 miles an hour or something, it go zzzz, which of course, anytime you hear buzzing or whizzing or, or screeching on an aircraft, that's a lot of drag. That's separated, high frequency separated flow, very bad, a lot of drag. So, will I be able to create a, a closure like this such that it's, it's flexible enough to allow the control surface to go up and down? yet stiff enough to avoid flutter? <laughs> I don't know. I think what would happen is that most of this would be a sandwich panel construction and be quite stiff. And then at the inside edge here, along here, the sandwich panel would end and I'd have you know two or three layers of carbon fiber that'd be somewhat flexible so that most of this is quite rigid, so we don't get vibrations that go down here this way along the edge. Uh, yet, it's just flexible enough to let it close up. And then the top of the elevon would be designed such that the thickness of the sandwich panel was removed from the elevon. So as it came up here, it would uh, just tuck in completely and uh, be uh, perfectly smooth when we're in neutral flight. Now, remember on my glider, uh, we're using the flaps for pitch trim. When you want to fly fast, you put the flaps all the way up. Normal takeoff, flaps are down some. Thermally, the flaps can be in several different down positions depending upon how slow you want to go. So, uh, slow flight, flaps are always deployed. Uh, high speed flight, flaps all the way up. And uh, that's because that is the lowest drag methodology that I know of for getting the pitching moments required to get the nose down and go fast. Using the elevons to put the nose down and go fast is counterproductive because when you put the elevons down, you're cambering the wing and a highly cambered wing doesn't want to go fast. So we do it with the flaps instead. Same way that Swift does it. Okay, so there we've covered the cover. <laughs> no pun intended. And let's talk about the exit for the plenum chamber. Before the exit on the plenum chamber, I had a flat plate up here and it had a ramp up in front. And yeah, very crude. It was thick exit here, about 3 sixteenths of an inch. It wasn't straight. Uh, it could be a lot of separated flow. So it was a first swipe. Um, and to see if the concept even 
had a modicum of value to it. Uh, so this is a second swipe uh, that we're, we're going to see if I can find out how far down can I go with the gap here. I'll push with two fingers here. Uh, how far can I go down with the gap before it stops working? Does it have to be thick like this? Or can I go down here to 16th of an inch or an eighth of an inch? And this stick is to keep my arm and hand out of the flow so that I can push down on this little sucker like this. And it's not quite straight. The balsa stick there is a little flexible. And who knows, when I'm out in the field, I might have to use two hands like this and fill around with it like that. And then as I go along, I'm gonna use my feeler gauges here, put them underneath and find out Oh, uh, how, how close am I now to uh, being, uh, how, how much am I open now? And then I can put my dial calipers on there because my feeler gauge is all rusty, can't read it anymore. I'll put my uh, dial calipers on there and go, oh, it's this thick. And I can do a whole bunch of different thicknesses that way. Now I'll have the, the flap itself, I'll have a wedge put in at the other end and I'll have it taped off so that it can't move up and down while I'm doing this. So it might come to the point where I get a pretty good idea what thickness I want here and I'll tape this off and then I'll run the flap up and down through its full range of motion and see how it works that way. But initially, uh, I'm just gonna have this down a little bit like this and then I'm gonna run this guy up and down and see what the flow looks like. There'll be more tufts here. So that's the whole concept. In real life, this uh, turning vein here would not be flexible like this. This is going to be a molded part. Uh, in fact, what the, the whole plenum chamber in this part probably all be uh, molded and built up into one piece such that when I'm building the flap, you build the bottom of the flap first, you glue in the plenum chamber, and then you put the top of the flap on there. So the plenum chamber be built separately out of uh, rigid rigid and molded components so we get the curves, exact curves that I want and the amount of space on the gap and so forth. So there we go. Uh, just this is a way to do some parametric studies very quickly out in the field and most of this is put together with hot melt glue and tape, both double face and single sided, clear, white, all kinds of tape such that when I'm out in the field, if I need to, if I want to, I can quickly take stuff apart, make some changes, put it back together, and try a different configuration. So uh, easy, inexpensive, uh, highly adaptable to doing different tests, which is always a good thing when you're going out to test. Um, I look forward to seeing you over at uh, Patreon, or uh, give me a shout, on a shout out and a few bucks on uh, Buy Me A Coffee, and uh, we'll see you there, and you'll get the test results. Uh, so, cross your fingers, and as I always say, fly safe and bye for now.